live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. November 19th, 1994. We're at Rice Stadium over in Salt Lake City, Utah, for one of the greatest and fiercest rivalries in all of college football, as it's the holy war between the Utah Utes and the BYU Cougars. And in the over 100 meetings total between the two teams, the 1994 installment of the game might have been the greatest one of all time. At the very least, it's in the conversation. Because in this battle between two top 25 teams, Utah, after winning last year's battle by a final score of 34-31, did the exact same thing here and won a 34-31. After BYU took a 31-27 lead with 2.15 left following a John Walsh touchdown pass to Mike Johnston, Utah immediately answered and scored the game-winning touchdown with just 56 seconds left, which was the first time in 23 years that Utah won back-to-back -back games against BYU. It was an absolutely crazy game where the lead changed hands three times in the fourth quarter alone, and six times total. And it is still remembered nearly three decades later as one of the all-time great games in the history of the rivalry. But while you might know about how this game ended, and the story behind that, you might not know the real incredible story here. And that involves this player right here for BYU, a fullback by the name of Hema Hemuli. There were many reasons why BYU lost this game, but you can't blame Hemuli one bit as he finished the game with 100 yards from scrimmage, having one of the best outings of his career. And sure, with no context, a 100-yard game sounds really good, and sounds like a really solid day at the office. But it's even more remarkable when you realize not only was he not even supposed to be playing in this game, but he wasn't even supposed to be alive. In the week leading up to the game, he suffered injury and pain so severe and life-threatening that forget about ever playing football again let alone this week. No one knew if he was even going to survive. And somehow, he did, and put together this performance for the ages, even if it came in a losing effort. Because this is the story behind what has to be, without a doubt, the greatest comeback story in the history of the BYU Cougars. Before I talk about the actual incident in question that changed Heimuli's life forever, we need some context to understand just how things were going for Heimuli beforehand. Ever since Heimuli arrived onto BYU's campus in 1992, he made an immediate impact in the running and the receiving game, slotting in practically right away as the team's starting fullback. And yes, he did have some ball security issues at times. He touched the ball 430 times in his career and fumbled it 14 times, including three times in the season opener in 1994 against Hawaii. However, when he was holding onto the ball, he was providing a really nice spark in BYU's offense more often than not as a really good blocker, as a hard runner of the football, and as a man with very solid hands out of the backfield. And while there's no footage available from his most recent game before the incident, unfortunately, it was the best game of his career by a country mile. On November 10th, 1994, BYU played the San Diego State Aztecs in an absolutely critical game for the Cougars to keep their hopes alive at winning the WAC. And in this game, when BYU needed to win the most, they got it, as they won 35-28, with the man of the hour being none other than Hema Hemuli. In this game, he got the ball 17 times on the ground, which was a career high. And Hemuli made the most of those carries, picking up 115 rushing yards, which was the first and only time he ever crossed 100 rushing yards in a game throughout his collegiate career. Part of why he got the ball so much was because in the middle of the game, starting running back Jamal Willis got sick and was unable to play in the fourth quarter. So he newly picked up the slack and then some by averaging 6.8 yards per carry. He scored two rushing touchdowns, which tied a career high, and he also added six receptions for 63 yards on top of that. When all was said and done, he newly finished the game with a whopping 178 yards from scrimmage. It was just the game that he newly needed to have especially in a winning effort. As offensive guard Tim Hanshaw said on Hamuli's performance, we knew we had to run the ball on them. We were determined to run, and Hema fit in well into the plan. He gave us a preview of what he's going to be like next year. That was the good news for Hamuli. He was coming off of a win. He had the best game of his career, and his team was still alive in the hunt for the conference title. 
The bad news was that he didn't answer any questions in the post-game press conference, despite being the man of the hour. And the reason for that was because he left immediately afterwards to attend to his mother, who was sick. His mother had been dealing with kidney problems since the summer, and had a heart attack a few months later in October, so Hamuli went immediately after the game to be with her. Keep in mind that his mother was not in Provo, where BYU is. His mother was in Salt Lake City, so that's about an hour drive. Hamuli left immediately after the game to see her, then came back to Provo, and then started watching some television, as he usually does. As Hamuli said, I don't sleep well after games. I go home and flip through the channels. I probably had an hour of sleep the night after the game. And on this night in particular, Hamuli wasn't kidding when he said he didn't sleep well, as he only got an hour of sleep before going to work out the next morning at the team facility. But then, the sleep deprived Hamuli, after the workout, wanted to see his mother again. The two had an extremely close bond, and Hamuli wanted to be there for her however he could, especially in her time of need. As Hamuli said on his mother, who had been undergoing kidney dialysis three times a week, she's the toughest person I've ever known. I wish I was half as tough as she was. She's an inspiration to me. I was the baby in the family, and the baby in the family always gets spoiled, especially in our culture. My mom and I are really tight. The team knew about his mother and what Hamuli was doing, spending just about all of his free time making the commute to Salt Lake City, where she was staying while undergoing the dialysis treatments. His teammates and his coaches admired him, and how he never missed a practice, and always fought through, even when she was having bad days, and you could tell that her health was getting to him. So it makes complete sense as to why Hamuli wanted to visit his mother as often as he could. But this time, doing it one day after a game, and on an hour's worth of sleep in presumably the last 36 or so hours, you can unfortunately probably see where this one is going. Because at 1 o'clock on the afternoon of Friday, November 20th, he was driving on I-15, and was about 15 minutes into the drive when he started feeling tired. But Hamuli, about a quarter of the way through the drive, and determined to see his mother, decided to keep going. And that decision almost immediately backfired, as not even a few minutes later, Hamuli went over the median and was going against the direction of traffic. When he woke up and realized this, he jerked the wheel to get back on the right side of the road, and hit a pole as a result. After hitting the pole, the car went 25 feet in the air, and as it landed, it rolled over four or five times. When you're going at full speed, roll over five times, and go airborne over 25 feet, let's call it for what it is. You are extremely likely to not survive that. You should be dead. As Hamuli would later say, I just closed my eyes and went with everything. I thought I had flipped just once because it happened so quick. But then, I went end over end a couple of times. Some people who witnessed the incident said that the car didn't roll four or five times, but rather rolled six or seven. I should note in a bizarre twist of fate that Hamuli usually never wore his seatbelt. As he would say, he thought that seatbelts were a waste of time. Why he felt this way, and whether he felt it just took too long, or that nothing could happen to him and he was invincible, or he just didn't like the feel of them, I have no clue. However, for some reason, he decided on this drive to wear his seatbelt. And he was determined to wear his seatbelt so much that even after the latch on the driver's side didn't work, he hooked his belt to the latch on the passenger's side. To this day, Himuli has no idea what compelled him to wear his seatbelt on this day versus all other days, and why he was persistent on using it, even after the latch on his side of the car was broken. As Hamuli said, maybe God wanted me to have more time to repent, or else I owe a lot of people money. If Hamuli was not wearing his seatbelt, there is no doubt about it. He would be dead. However, Hamuli was hanging on. He was barely hanging on, but he was hanging on nonetheless. Eventually, two emergency medical personnel people found his car all messed up on the side of the road, came to his assistance, and wrapped his head to try and stop the bleeding, since he really felt blood coming from his forehead. Somehow, he survived, and to this day, he has no idea how he survived, saying, I'm very amazed. 
I've had people tell me they had friends who had similar accidents and didn't live to tell about it. I'm very lucky. And he went to the hospital to be treated afterwards. And while he received 70 stitches, even though he was in obvious pain, as anyone would be after going airborne and rolling over upwards of seven times, he was relatively fine otherwise, or at least as much as someone would be after this. Somehow, not only did he survive an incredibly low probability event, but with 70 stitches in his body, he returned to practice a few days later. When he got to practice, he told his head coach, Lavelle Edwards, man, am I glad to see you. The legendary Edwards had been coaching in some capacity since 1954, and had been BYU's head coach since 1972, so he coached thousands upon thousands of players throughout his career. But as Edwards would later say, I never had a player tell me that before. And in one of the most remarkable comeback stories ever, not even one week after flipping over and almost dying, surviving simply by the skin of his teeth, he somehow played in that Holy War game against Utah. No, BYU did not win that game. As mentioned before, the Cougars lost to Heartbreaker by a final score of 34-31. But in the grand scheme of things, especially for Heimuli, I'm not sure that mattered at all. Just the fact that Heimuli was able to play in this game was a miracle in itself. But the fact that he had one of the best games of his entire career? That should not have been possible. Again, he finished the game with 100 yards from scrimmage. In his career at that point, playing in 32 games, this was just the sixth time that he crossed that barrier. His five catches was the fifth time he ever crossed that barrier, and his average of 14.6 yards per catch was the highest of his career among those five times. And he did all of this just days after dying, flipping over and having no business whatsoever surviving. It truly was a miracle. And for what it's worth, today, Heimuli is an advocate of wearing your seatbelt, as he learned firsthand just how much it saved lives. Hema Heimuli had a solid career with BYU, playing four seasons with the program, recording over 2,500 yards from scrimmage, making an immediate impact, and playing a key part in helping the Cougars win three conference titles and making it to three bowl games. But today, he might be best known for one of the craziest comeback stories of all time. On Thursday, he had the greatest game of his life. On Friday, he almost died, and probably should have died. The fact that he survived was nothing short of a miracle. And one week later, he came back from the crash and played one of his best games ever. Because as great as Heimuli played on this day, the even greater thing is that he lived to tell the tale. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.